Welcome to Battles of Faith. We're your host, Ivor and Atante Myers. Throughout this series, we've been talking about the entertainment industry. Today, we want to switch gears just a little bit. We've entitled this program, Flame On. We want to encourage our young people and our viewers to get on fire for the Lord. And that's what we're going to be discussing today. Yeah, Tante, you know, some people may be wondering, uh, Flame On, what, that, that sounds familiar. When I was little, there was a comic book that I used to love to read. And uh, in this particular comic book, there were four individuals. And there's actually a movie now out, out now uh, about these superheroes. And uh, one of these superheroes' name was Johnny. And uh, Johnny had this ability to become a human torch. And so he would say, flame on. And all of a sudden, whoo, he would flame on. And you know, I I've said it before that I think that a lot of uh, what Hollywood presents out there, uh, one is a mockery of, of God, but, and two, it's a, it's a counterfeit of what God has in store for his people. Right. And so we want to talk about the biblical concept of flaming on. What does it mean to be on fire? What does it mean to be, to be burning with a love for Jesus Christ in your heart? That's right. On many of the other programs, we've been sharing what we have found in the Word of God and what God has taught us personally about the entertainment industry. We've talked about television. We've talked about movies and music and video games and different things like that. But today, we really want to show the other side, what it's like to be on fire for God, especially as a young person, what God has in store for you, what his mission is for you, and how you can get on fire and stay on fire. So right now, we also want to tie in the battle plan. Again, that we want you to understand that as, uh, as, as we have an enemy, a spiritual enemy, he's going to try to prevent us from doing what? From flaming on. Right. So we want to present both sides, but we want to encourage our, our viewers out there today to, to, to grab your Bibles, because we're going to be going through the Bible and, and we're going to see what it means to flame on. Let's go, first of all, to Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3, and we're going to begin with verse 14. And we're going to read through to verse uh, 16. And, and God here is speaking to his church. Uh, he's addressing seven churches. And this particular church is Laodicea. This is the, the church, the, the last church uh, before Jesus comes back to, to the earth. And here's his message to the Laodicean church. And by the way, the, the, the name Laodicea means the people of judgment, the people of judgment. And so notice what it says in verse 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, these things saith the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. It's interesting here, Atante, that, uh, that Christ is speaking to his church and he's telling them, I want you to be either cold or hot. Now, evidently, to be hot means to be on fire for him. To be cold means to say, I don't want to serve him. You see, but God is saying, I'd rather you be hot or cold, but I don't want you to be lukewarm. lukewarm. Now, it's interesting, Atante, that when you take these words hot and cold and you mix them together, what do you get? You get lukewarm. You get lukewarm. Or we might say you, you may even get cool. Right. A and God is saying, listen, uh, and as I think especially to the young people, he's saying, listen, you cannot be hot and cool at the same time. Right. And, and, and I believe that one of the things that the enemy is trying to do in these last days is he, he has a young, he has the, the, this generation focused on being cool versus on being hot. That's right. And instead of being hot, they're so focused on being cool and that being hot is not even desirable. No, it's, it's, it's not cool to be, <laughs> it's not cool to be hot. And we want to just, you know, explode that and say, look, God is calling us to be hot. Being hot doesn't mean being stiff. Being hot means having a vital connection with Jesus Christ. I can testify to this because I grew up most of my teen years, which I know my husband did as well, trying to be cool, 
So I was always trying to do the things to fit in with everybody else and whatever the cool thing was to do, then I did it. However, when I found Jesus for myself and started a real relationship with him, being on fire was, or being hot or flaming on was much more exciting than I ever had being cool. Right. The joy, the peace, the happiness, the security in his love, it was all there. And it was exciting to, when, when I was called to share, when, when God would open up a situation where I'd have to either witness or um, tell somebody about him, it was the most exciting thing in my day. Right. It was like there was nothing better. There was nothing more fun, nothing that made me any happier than that. Yeah. Now, you know, the, what God hates most, and God, God doesn't hate a lot, but what he hates a lot is when his children want to be so accepted by the world that they uh, resort to peer pressure, when they resort to, to being cool instead of being hot. You know, the Bible talks in uh, Matthew 7 and verse 15. Jesus here uh, gives a principle. Notice what it says. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Well, what's the matter with this picture? You've got wolves who are dressed up as sheep, the Bible says. And, and God hates that because it's deceptive. You've got a wolf and he's hiding out in sheep's clothing. You know, we don't, God says, stay away from that. Well, have you ever stopped to think about the concept of sheep in wolves' clothing? Hmm. You know, uh, a sheep who, who say, you know what, in order for us to get close to the world, in order for us to be accepted of the world, we're going to start, you know, talking like the wolf and acting like the wolf and, and, and dressing like the wolf uh, so that we can be accepted, but inside I'm really a sheep. They just don't know it. And I think that that principle is something that God wants us to, to stay away from because, again, it's the principle of deception. Same thing, you know, wolves in sheep's clothing, same principle, sheep's and wolf clothing. He says, let the wolves be wolves and let the sheep be, be sheep. sheep. You know, let there be a clear distinction between those who are hot and those who are cool. And God is calling for that distinction, and he says, in me, you can be that. In me, I can, t I can teach you how to flame on. That's right. Jesus can teach us how to flame on. Wouldn't it be so exciting to have a youth group where the base was the Word and studying the Word and, you know, just being filled more and more with the Spirit? Because so many times we form youth groups to entertain or let's go play a game, or let's go, you know, just do something entertaining. And there's nothing wrong with that. We should have fun with our young people. There's nothing wrong with having fun, um, wholesome, good fun. However, the Word, still ha we still have to be deep in the Word. It's important. This generation is the next generation, and Jesus is coming soon. Right. We were talking about biblical illiteracy in the last program, and, you know, I've seen it a lot as I've traveled and spoken with different youth groups and young people all over. You know, youth groups are, are a large part of the, of, of the youth ministry today is about entertaining. And then we give a little nugget about the Word of God. We say we've done our work. But you know, I, I believe that a biblical youth group should be a group that is based upon the Word of God. Uh, a biblical youth group is a youth group that says we are going to fulfill the mandate that Jesus Christ has given us to, to uh, uh, go out and to evangelize the world, to win the world, to, uh, to tell them about the gospel of Jesus Christ, to turn their eyes upon Jesus and to turn their eyes to the word of God. And I think one of the, one of the biggest problems is that many of our young people, uh, because of a lack of a knowledge of the word of God, you know, so many things are going on out there where we're being entertained and then we don't have a knowledge of the word of God. So I'm now fearful to go out and share because I don't know what I'm sharing, you see. And so when God makes this call and he says, I want you to be hot in the church, on fire or cold out, but don't be cool. And I believe that what Satan has done is he's made us afraid to want to push this for the young people because 
of the history in the past of the church and i'm not talking about any one particular church but i'm just talking about the christian church overall you know these things were pushed you know study the word pray all these different things but young people weren't seen some of the adults and the other older members in the church truly having a real supernatural personal connection with god and so now you know they didn't see the fire they didn't see the fire so they don't want to be hypocrites so they're just saying well come on we'll do the god thing and you should pray and you should read the bible a little bit but let's go out and have fun let's just make sure we have a good time together and we're friends and it's important for youth leaders and pastors and other people in the church to connect with the young people on that level but it's not more important than studying the word that's we right. have to have a balance that's right well let's talk about how to flame on because this is this is where God wants us to be at. And I have a text here in Matthew chapter 3 and verse 11. John the Baptist here is speaking, and he says something very powerful and very eye-opening. Uh, in verse 11, he says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire and that's a powerful text Atante because you know when you imagine baptism baptism if you've seen that of baptism before what happens is the minister stands before you he puts a white white cloth over your nose and over your mouth which symbolizes that you have stopped breathing death death he takes you down into the water and it is baptism by submersion so you are fully underwater and then which represents burial and then he brings you back up and he removes that cloth and you take your first breath so to speak but what i want to focus in on is the fact that you come up wet you come up doused in water as it were now we need to understand that because when the bible talks about being baptized with fire just imagine in your mind the concept of god taking you down in a pool of fire and bringing you back up and what are you on Fire. You're on fire. You are submersed in fire. And God says, this is what it means to be baptized in fire. It means you are submersed in the presence of God. In Hebrews 12, verse 29, the Bible says, our God is a consuming fire. fire. And so to be baptized uh, in fire, to be baptized in the spirit of God means to go down and to submerse yourself into God, into the spirit of God, into the word of God and come up. And when you come up, you are on fire. You have flamed on, not by any fire of your own, but by the fire of God himself. And I think uh, once we're baptized by the water, I think we kind of miss this point sometimes because it says, and with fire, it's very important. We get baptized um, by the water and we just feel like, well, we're just the same regular old people that have just publicly said that we're going to follow Jesus. But this second part about being baptized with the fire or the spirit of God, is so very vital and important. That's right. And that fire, what that fire does is it, you know, fire consumes. And what that fire does is it consumes uh, uh, the, the carnality that, that is in our hearts. It consumes all those desires that we once had out in the world. I no longer want to be cool. I want to be hot. And that's what this fire does. It teaches us how to love Jesus. It teaches us how to be on fire, how to burn, how to have that burning desire in our hearts to serve Jesus. And really, a lot of times, this is what's missing. So we go out into the world and try to find other things that will make it appear that we are, that we may be on fire when we're really being cool. Right. You see, and God says, I want you to come to me. I want you to submerse yourself in me. He didn't say, I want you to submerse yourself in music. He said, I want you to subvert subvert yourself in me, in my word. And it is through his word that he sends forth, that this reaction takes place in us, and we can walk around like fireballs. I mean, you're not literally on fire, but you're walking around flamed on. And, you know, there might, I know that there's a young person watching right now who's thinking, can that happen for me overnight? Can it really happen? Well, I know for myself, I just got to the point, and this is what I would recommend to anybody, but I just got to the point where I desired that, I desired the fire, but I didn't know how to get it. So I just, I prayed a simple prayer to God. And I remember 
being in the Oakwood College Sanctuary, and it was a prayer meeting on a Wednesday night, and I just kneeled down and whispered a prayer, Lord, by any means necessary, I had been in very heavily into Malcolm X, so I said, by any means necessary, please save me. And nothing that I did within myself to start it, but I believe that the Holy Spirit really started working on my heart and my thoughts and my feelings started to change. The things I wanted to do, the desires that I wanted to do, the music that I started to listen to, it wasn't all overnight, but it was a step and a process. And, it, and where I was in the process, as long as I obeyed God and followed Him, I was on fire. Even though I still had much more growing to do, I was still on fire for where I was. That's right. You know, when you think about the, that invisible reality of God, that invisible realm, that, that great controversy that cannot be seen with the, with the natural eyes. When God opened up my eyes to see this conflict, that, that's what caused me to flame on. When I saw that there were invisible realities, that, that, that there was this great controversy in which the souls of humankind were, I mean, to me, this was greater than any movie I'd ever seen. Right. And it was real. And I thought, Lord, you want me to have a part in this great controversy? And I mean, it was like the greatest honor. And, and just from that concept alone, Lord said, son, flame on. And, and ever since I've come into being a Christian, it's been fire. And I'm not boasting about myself and saying, look at me, I'm on fire. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is that the desire of God has, has burned away my desire for anything in the world. And that's where God is calling us to. When, when God does this for you, when, when, when you say, Lord, I want to flame on, and he gives that to you, it's a gift, and he will not not answer that prayer. God desires this more than anything. He gave his son for this reason. He wants you to be on fire. He wants to get to know you better. He will do this, and you will see that the things of the world will become darker. They won't, you won't desire them. And, and you can't change that within yourself. God has to do it. I used to absolutely love soap operas mm -hmm. and other things on television and movies and different kind of music. Now when I am in that presence, when I have to be forced to, you know, be in the presence of a television program that I don't feel comfortable with, it, it makes me absolutely miserable inside. And I couldn't do that for myself. Only God could do that. Right. Well, you know, if God wants us to flame on, we know that the enemy wants us to what? Flame cool off. Cool down. You know, right. cool down, cool off, cool off. And I, I, I think about the text in Revelation 12, 15. I'm going to read that here. It says, And the serpent, which represents the devil, cast out of his mouth water as a flood. Now, we know in the Bible that um, uh, waters, according to Revelation 19, I believe it's verse 10 or so, or, verse, or rather Revelation 17, verse 15, that waters represent peoples, nations, multitudes, and tongues. So the Bible says here that Satan casts out of his mouth basically people, nations, multitudes, and tongues. And everything that goes with that, the culture, the flow of worldliness after the woman to cause her, and the woman represents the church, to cause her to be carried away. And one of the ways I see this text, Atante, is that the devil, in, in order to cool down the church, he's cast out this flood of worldliness. Right. You see? And so God is saying, flame on, be baptized in fire, and Satan is casting out this flood of worldliness into the church. And, and, and it's up to us to say, who am I going to go with? Am I going to go with the flow that Satan is, 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 is pushing? Or am, am I going to be baptized in the Spirit of God and stand against that flood? The Bible says in Isaiah 59 and verse 19, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. And part of that standard is when he says, flame on. I'm going to allow you to stand strong against that flood, and that flood will not move you away. You'll be standing firm on the rock of God's Word. You know, as we're speaking about this, I'm actually envisioning a young person in their living room or in their bedroom, wherever they may be watching uh, this program, and getting excited and wanting to do this and sharing it with others. Can you imagine um, an army of youth? I call it an army just... As, you know, because the name of this program is Battles of Battles Faith. Of Faith. And it is a war because Satan is not going to give up on you easily. He's not just going to say, okay, good, just go on and, and, and be on fire. Go, go be with the Lord. He is not going to give up on you easily. But like Ivor just said, that God will lift up a standard. And you can trust that the Lord has more power and strength, but you just have to hang on. And he will 
um, God will allow Satan to come in and, and, and test you. Right. You will go through some testing time, but it's just to purify you and to draw you closer to God, That's not right. to give up. One of the greatest lessons I learned from a friend when I came into this church was this. If you take uh, a, a group of, you know, a couple of sticks and put them together and light them on fire, they're all going to burn. If you take one of those sticks out of that bundle and set it to the side, that, that stick is going to go out. The flame is going to die out. And God calls us to be around like-minded people. He says, I don't want you to, to get away from the burning, the burning brands. I want you to be around like-minded people. Not just think about, all, you know, the friends that I have met since I've come into this church. You know, my own brother, Sean, he is a minister now. He and I were in the group together, and he is an encouragement to me. A good friend of mine is Marquise Johns. He just escaped the black hole two years ago, and he's now preaching the word of God. You know, I think about all these different people who have come out, and, and, and we encourage one another. We strengthen one another. He's on fire, you know, and, and, and they're on fire, and I want to be around people who are on fire because it helps me to be on fire. And there might be somebody out there thinking, well, it's, you know, easier for you. You grew up in the world, and so you just came into the church, and now you're on fire. But his story is totally different than mine. I might be like you, where you were raised as a Christian and just never really have, not yet, you haven't yet made that decision to really follow God. You can do it too. You don't have to go to the world That's and right. come back. I would rather you not have my story or mm -hmm. his story, but to, to just to start being on fire now That's without right. having to have those experiences that the world has to offer because it does leave scars. That's right. Let me share um, uh, why it's so important, Atante, to be on fire in light of the great controversy and in light of the final reward at the end of time. Why does God, the Bible says in Hebrews 12, 29, that God is a consuming fire? The question is, why is God a consuming fire? Why does God manifest himself as fire? Is it to terrify and to scare us? I would say not. Let's look at a text in Song of Solomon. Song of Solomon. And Atante, what, what is the Song of Solomon about? Well, it's a love story. That's right. It's a love story between uh, Solomon and, and the Shulamite, Shulamite woman. And in this book, this is a beautiful book, but it, it, in this book, there's this relationship being described between uh, these two lovers. And you'll find here something powerful in Song of Solomon chapter 8 and verse 6, speaking about fire. The Bible says here, Set me as a seal upon thine heart, as a seal upon thine arm, for love is as strong as death. Jealousy is cruel as a grave. The coals thereof are coals of fire, which has a most vehement flame. Now notice verse 7. Many waters cannot quench love. Why does God manifest himself as fire? Because God is love. Have you ever said to yourself, oh, I just got to have a burning desire uh, in my heart for this person or that person? You know, you may remember courting or, you know, you should, if you're married, you should have a you mean burning. the way you feel about me right now? That's right. <laughs> you should have a burning desire in your heart. We call that fire. I've got, I'm on fire for my life, you know? And so God says, God manifests himself as fire, not to terrify us, but to say, listen, I am love. And this is one of the best ways in which I can reveal my love to you. It's interesting, Atante, <laughs> that uh, after mankind sinned, God all of a sudden became a fearful a fearful being. We ran from him in the right. garden. Adam and Eve ran from him, whereas before they came running to him. Right. You see? And so it's interesting that once sin entered, we began to view God and his fire as something to be afraid of. And God says, listen, the reason why I want you to be baptized, and, and I mean, every time I think about this, it, 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 just, it just blows my mind. Because we need to realize that heaven is a city of fire. You think about it, Atante. Uh, God's throne is a throne of fire. In Revelation 15, 2, it talks about a sea of glass mingled with fire, and the righteous are standing on that sea of glass. Uh, the angels, the Bible says, are, are ministering spirits of fire. Uh, God's throne, what I mentioned, is fire. And when you think about that, when, when we get to heaven, and the Bible says there that the righteous will stand on the sea of glass mingled with fire. How is that so? You know, it's amazing when you, when you think about the story of, uh, of Moses and the burning bush. When Moses encountered that burning bush, he asked the question, how is it that this bush is burning, 
but it is not being consumed. being consumed. And in that bush, God had illustrated the plan of salvation. What he was saying was, Moses, heaven is a city of fire. And in order for you to dwell with me and not be consumed, you have got to be baptized. You have got to flame on so that when you enter into the city of heaven, you'll be on fire. You know, and we will, the Bible actually says in, in the book of Isaiah 33, let me find that very quickly. Isaiah 33, powerful text here. Isaiah 33 and verse 14. It says, the sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness has surprised the hypocrites. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting Burnings. burnings? Now the question here is being asked, who among us are going to be able to live in everlasting fire, to live among everlasting burnings. We have to be on fire to be able to coexist in the fire. That's right. Now, the devil would say that it's the wicked that burn forever. But notice what the Bible says. He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly, he that despiseth the gain of oppression, that shaketh his hands from holding of bribes, that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood, and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil, he shall dwell on high. Atante, the Bible says that it's the righteous that get to dwell with the everlasting burnings, which is Jesus Christ. It is the righteous that get to stand on the sea of glass and not be consumed. The wicked, as the city of God is coming out, out of heaven, and they see the righteous standing in the city, and they're going, why is it that they are, that they are, the fire is going, but they are not consumed? It's because while they were here on earth, they learned what it meant to flame on. And God wants us to experience that now. That's right. He wants us to experience that now. You know, Atante, when, when the flood came and destroyed all the creatures on the earth, there was one creature that was not destroyed that was outside the ark. And you read Genesis, you'll see that the sea creatures were not destroyed. Why? Because they were already water creatures. God had sent water down. They were already water creatures. When God destroys the earth by fire, there will be those who will not be affected. Why? Because they learned what it meant to flame on. They were fire creatures. They were baptized in the fire of God, in the spirit of God. And so the fire has no effect over the righteous, but it will destroy the wicked. And we're saying flame on now before it's too late. God is calling us to be on fire. And it's, that's right. It's God's desire that we be on fire. And, you know, I know as young people, many times we think, well, it's my parents or my grandparents or the pastor or the other people of, at the church who should be on fire and not me. But God is calling you especially right. because Jesus is coming soon and time is running out and he wants to use young people. He has a calling for you. We're out of time. Join us next time. God bless.